Make sure you guys watch this video all the way to the end to find out exactly where this piece of hair was hiding and how it was causing my vacuum cleaner not to work. What's going on guys, I'm Bill and welcome to Bill's How To. Today I'm going to show you guys how to fix the head on a Dyson vacuum cleaner when it no longer spins anymore. Very, very common problem whether you're using the stick vacuum or you've got the main big unit, like in this case here we've got the Syntec, the process is going to be exactly the same. What I mean by the head not spinning is this little brush here in the head doesn't spin anymore and when this doesn't work it doesn't pick up most of the mess especially on the carpet so it's a very common problem with the Dyson vacuum cleaners and other brands as well so this solution might also work for your other brands make sure you stick around let's get straight into it guys let's do this so the issue that I'm having is with the bigger unit with this Syntec one here when I turn it on this one here doesn't actually rotate properly So we're still getting plenty of suction coming up through the top, but the actual brush roller itself doesn't spin. This is supposed to spin nice and freely. I'm going to show you guys the first most common problem um, to cause this, and we're going to test it out on my actual stick vacuum. So this one here is actually spinning, but it's not spinning as free as it should, and you can see exactly why right there. It's absolutely full of hair. That is the biggest problem. I'm going to show you guys how to open this one here up. So as you can tell guys, this one here is absolutely filled with hair. The way that we actually clean this out, if we have a look at the side here, there's a little notch and that's actually a cap to remove the brush. So the easiest way is to take a spoon, we'll take the back end of it and we'll just turn this one here over to the left just a little bit. That'll loosen up the cap and you can push out the roller. So if we just put our fingers in there, we can start sliding that roller back, remove that cap. Now if your one is as filled up as mine, it's gonna be a little bit hard to remove this roller but same process, just push it out. Once you've got enough, you can then grab onto the end and you should be able to pull that section there out. So as you can tell guys, this one here is absolutely filled with hair. The easiest way to clean this up is with a pair of scissors. We're gonna simply cut this hair, being very careful not to cut the red bristles. So this one here is a clean one. Okay, we're gonna cut in between the red bristles, making sure not to cut these bristles here off. So we'll take our scissors, find where our red bristles are, cut them all the way up. And then we can open that section there up and start peeling that hair back. So once all the hair's been removed, we've got a nice clean roller once again, we can pop that one there back in, Put our cap back on the end, making sure to lock that one there back in. So turn it to the right and that'll lock it up for you. We can now test the unit once again. So you're going to find that a lot of the times that is actually the cause of your problem. Just a buildup of hair over the brush, simply stopping that from spinning. Now in this case here on the big unit, you can see we've got a nice clean brush and it still doesn't spin. So I know that's not my issue. The next thing we can do is look at the electrical connections. Now depending on the unit that you have, it may or may not have electrical connections and the reason for that is this little brush or the roller down the bottom, it rotates based on either electrical motor or a turbine. So on the big unit here, it rotates based on a turbine, but if we have a look at this small unit right here, which is a little stick vacuum, um, a few other bigger, bigger models also have the electrical connections, this one here actually operates on electrical motor. So if we have a look at the head of the vacuum cleaner here, I'll turn it around to where it connects. You can see down the bottom here, we've got two little pins. That forms part of the electrical connection that runs all the way through this. So when we plug this one here in, it's supposed to have a solid clean connection. So it's always a good idea to have a look, make sure you haven't got any dirt or dust or anything else built up in there, making sure all the way through, you're gonna find those connections. So all, anywhere along the shaft where you can actually disconnect, you'll find there's also another set of connectors right there. So you just wanna run through your whole unit, make sure that's nice and clean. A lot of times it's simply not getting power and that's the reason why it's not spinning. So in this case here, on the stick uh, vacuum cleaner, that could possibly be the issue. Now when we look at the main vacuum cleaner, what, like I said before, it runs on a turbine, so that means we don't have electrical connections. So there's only one more problem that it could actually be and I'm gonna show you guys how to fix it. So if you've tried both of those methods and your roller is still not spinning, more than likely this is gonna be the solution for you and it's simply because it's an area that's definitely overlooked. 
What we're going to do is take our spoon once again. We're going to take off that end cap on the little head unit here. We're going to remove our uh, brush or roller that should have already been cleaned. And what we're going to look for is that little section down the back of the head here. So if we have a look right down the back of the head unit here, you can see that there's a mechanism. This mechanism here actually allows our roller to turn. Without this one here spinning freely, it won't actually work. What you'll notice is a lot of times the hair is actually going to get caught in there. It's going to go right down to the back and that's going to prevent it from turning. It's going to be bound up very nice and tight down the back of there, so you might not be able to remove it with your fingers. What we're going to do is actually remove this mechanism here using a screwdriver. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So if we have a look at the screws that are used on the head here, you can see it's a star drive or a Torx bit, whichever one you like to call it. If you don't have one of these around, you can use a flathead screwdriver. Just make sure that it actually fits inside that slot. So once it fits in that slot and you've got a good bite on it, you'll be able to remove those screws. What we need to do is remove the outer plastic sections here just to give us a bit more access. If you've got nice small hands, you might not have to remove it, but in my case, I need to remove these outer sections. So once those outer guards have been removed, we can then remove the main bulk of this section here. If we have a look at the top, all you want to do is just simply pull on that just a little bit and we can wedge that section there out. Now we've got full clearance and access to the little screw that's in the back here. So we can take our screwdriver, slot that all the way in because there's a screw at the back which needs to be undone. And if we try and turn this one here, you'll notice that the mechanism also turns with it. So what we need to do is hold on to that mechanism and then back off our screw. Being very careful not to lose this screw. Just continue to back that one there off. And now we've got that screw also removed. So once the screw's removed, we can then hold on to the mechanism, give it a bit of a wiggle, and we should be able to pop this piece here out. And if we have a look at the back there, you can see that little ball of hair that is actually what was causing our problem. So this little ball of hair that's been wound up nice and tight behind the actual mechanism, you'd never be able to get your hands on it. You probably wouldn't even know it's there. And this is the cause of our problem. So now that we've got that out of the way, we can put everything back the way it was, put our mechanism back inside, take our screw, Put that back on the screwdriver. Just a note to everybody out there, if you do have Torx um, screws or even the um, star drive, whichever one you want to call it, it's preferable to use that over the flat head. You don't want to damage any of these screws. Once again, we're going to hold on to our little mechanism here and screw it all back in. Then we can return our plastic pieces back on. We can now put our roller back in, our cap, making sure, lock that one there back up. So now for the moment of truth guys, time for the test. And there we have it guys, so that is how to fix the head on your Dyson vacuum cleaner. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. As always, like, comment and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Bill. Thanks for watching Bill's Out To.